Hello, my name is Talon Petty. I'm the marketing specialist for the Field Bus Foundation. Today, I wanted to show all of you guys how to properly strip, crimp, and heat shrink H1 registered field bus cable for a professional, organized, and lasting installation. Okay, what I want to also do here real quick is to show everybody um, how to actually uh, do a similar thing with the, with the wires where I'll strip and, and shrink and ferrule the wire, but in this case, instead of doing the two wires that you would connect um, to a device out in the field uh, using single point grounding, I'm actually going to uh, do a similar thing, except this time we're going to connect it back to a coupler. So um, in this case, uh, again, it, it varies by region, but in the case of the U.S. with single point grounding, we will uh, keep the shield intact and actually connect it in with this um, great little terminal block deal uh, right into the uh, into the coupler. So let me run through that process again for you guys. Um, I'll go through it a bit quicker here since um, you've seen it once already. Let me go ahead and strip the outer jacket. Um, separating but also uh, being sure not to uh, damage the interior. At this point this is a little bit different for me. Uh, depending on the size heat shrink you're using, it can get tough slipping it over the, uh, the wire and the ferrule when you're using three wires that are all ferruled. So I like to go ahead and just slip the um, heat shrink over now. That kind of avoids the situation here in a minute. But anyway, again, we will separate the, uh, the shield wire here that is on the outside. And since we're keeping it intact this time, we just want to kind of separate it over here and leave it off to the side for the moment. So uh, again I'll continue here with the foil. You want to separate and remove the foil and oftentimes this stuff actually can give you quite the hassle. They, they tend to, to wrap it real tightly around the wire which while good <laughs> tends to also be quite the, uh, quite the hassle here. So um, I suppose I'll get it here in a minute. <laughs> Let's see. Alright there we go. Good. Got the foil. Again, uh, same situation as before. You actually just peel it back and pull it off. So that's removed. Now, of course, two wires here. To go ahead and just be done with the shield wire, uh, at this point, I like to just go ahead and ferrule it. Uh, it's a little bit different. You've got to be careful not let this thing slide down the um, cable too far. But again, if you're using the right size, it should sort of want to hang uh, by itself right on the wire. So we'll go ahead and ferrule and crimp this thing. Crimp it nice and tight. There we go. So that one's all ferruled and out of the way. We can move it again and of course repeat the steps for these. Again it is 18 gauge so we'll go ahead and give it two quick clips here and remove it. As mentioned previously, I tend to go ahead and give it a little twist, move it out of the way, and of course, same thing here. Give it two quick snips, separate, and remove that jacket. Now, again, time to ferrule these. Slip it over, down, and oop, missing the appropriate slot there and crimp. Just tight crimp as you can tell all these are crimping nicely and last but not least my black wire. Go ahead and crimp it as well. You, again make sure you're in the nice uh, appropriate slot in your crimpers. There are numerous sizes depending on the crimpers you got but these in particular have um, uh, multiple ranges for the uh, crimping ability. So anyway, now I've got all three wires and they're all ferruled and I've got my heat shrink on. I'll go ahead and slip that up. Again, you want to make sure that you uh, follow those three steps there, the insulate, isolate, and keep as short as possible. So now that these are nice and short and we're going to be sticking it, these three wires right here into this little terminal block, they don't need a lot of space uh, separating the three, so we'll go ahead and snug that uh, heat shrink up tight. And again, let's turn on the heat gun. 
and we'll get the heat going on it for uh, just a second is all it really takes. Put the wire in, give it a couple turns, and there you go. Nice tight heat shrunk wire. And in this case, we'll go ahead and connect it to the um, terminal bike that we're going to be using. Some of them are labeled. This one in particular doesn't have any labeling for positive shield and negative. So uh, not a big deal. Uh, you know, once you pick your uh, particular color coding and everything for your installation uh, for what's positive and negative, you just want to make sure you stick with that and, and follow the same process. In general, the, uh, in the case of like orange and blue and orange and brown, the blue and the brown will be the, the negative, the orange is going to be the positive. In my case, my, the red one will be my positive, and of course the, um, the black will be the negative. So let's go ahead and slide the individual ferrule connections into the terminal block, and all three are in their appropriate spot, and you'll actually want to tighten down the terminals. And there are manufacturers who make really great, um, really great screwdrivers that are uh, torque screwdrivers, and they will torque down to the appropriate uh, spec for these things. And those are awesome. If you're going to be doing a big installation, definitely recommend picking up a pair of those. Um, in my case, you know, just being here in the office, I don't have a set, so I'll just give it a nice tight uh, tug. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want to make sure that these things aren't going to want to slip out on you. So. Anyway, now we have all three wires, ferrule, trunk, see how clean that looks, and makes for a real click, um, click and go kind of scenario, uh, it, whereas this would just be needed to connect into the uh, field device out in the field. And you will have a, uh, assuming all things are done right, <laughs> you will now have a working spur. I wanted to take a real quick minute here. I actually had a, a gentleman over at Cobalt send me one of their example torque screwdrivers that I just mentioned um, not having in this video. So I wanted to take a quick minute and, and show everybody a little bit about it and what exactly you can do with them and how they work because they're actually really cool. So um, anyway, thanks uh, a bunch to Cobalt for sending this over and I'm not sure how easily everybody can see this here but um, it is a torque screwdriver and there are different um, torque ratings specs for each of uh, the different screwdrivers so depending on your application you'll pick the right one for you. Um, in this case this one is a, a 5.3 inch pounds or a 0.6 uh, newton meter so let's go ahead and pull it out and, and go through it. So pull out of its nifty little case here that it comes in um, and it also as you can see here it comes with different um, tips you can get you know, multiple flat heads, um, Phillips, uh, different lengths, different uh, torque ratings and everything. So, uh, And then of course here's the handle to it. So uh, it's very simple. Slide this in, click it down. Can you hear that click? Um, and you're basically good to go. So just to cover this real quick, uh, you go ahead and um, drop in all the wires into your quick connect here. And I'm going to start, uh, what I like to do is actually um, spin all these down just slightly snug just to make sure these wires don't slip out while I'm doing this. Um, if you do one at a time, it's fine, but if one of the wires slides out, you know, then you're trying to get, get it all in there. So anyway, now they're all kind of snug down, and uh, with this, all you do is just keep screwing until it clicks. And once it clicks, um, it's reached the... Um, certain spec that uh, whatever the screwdriver is rated at. So simply put it on this on the screw and start twisting. See that? I'm not sure if it, the sound comes across here, but that little quick snap, that means you've reached the desired torque spec. And you do that for all three of these, just like that. And this makes it really quick. You ensure that you got a real good torque on each one of these so that it's um, not going to be too tight to strip it and it won't be too loose to later fall out. So anyway that's the uh, torque screwdriver and I thought I'd showcase that to everybody real quick. 